Hello everyone, how are we all doing today? Uh, if you're anything like me, the answer to that question might be pretty rough. Um, Stevie, probably pretty rough as well. We certainly enjoyed our night on the town last night. He says, do I not drink? Yeah, he drinks. Okay, everyone, we're basking in the glory of beating Rangers again. I think I said this after the 3-2 game, but that feeling never gets old. The joy, the relief, um, the euphoria... It just never gets old. You could play them every day of your life and I'm convinced the feeling would be the exact same. But we've had a lot of really good days against Rangers recently and just in general under that great man, Ange Postacoglu. I'm actually looking at his derby record here and uh, so are you, I guess. Uh, yesterday was Ange's 10th derby in charge. Uh, as you can see, he's won six now, drawn to... And lost to one of those defeats I've got down there as well was the uh, after extra time one at the uh, semi final stage of the Scottish Cup last season. So it's really only one defeat in 10 and 90 minutes. It's certainly six games unbeaten against Rangers now. We've actually scored first in the last seven derbies too, which is pretty impressive. So Anne certainly has the measure of Rangers regardless of who it is that is managing them and he was certainly giving it loudy I didn't actually mention that in the post-match reaction, me and Stevie linked above, etc. For for some reason, but I do think that's the the most kind of animated I've probably seen Ange for a while. I think Tanadice last season, not when we won the league, but our first visit when he was twirling the the scarf around was was maybe number one. But um, he was really going for it yesterday. He kind of. Um, Went to walk off. You've probably seen this in various clips, but just when he was coming up to the main stand and about to kind of go up, up the tunnel and they started singing the, his song and, and he kind of turned away back on himself and gave it more of this again and he kind of gave it one of those and, oh, I just love the guy so much. He's just the, the greatest thing ever, as far as I'm concerned. Apart from Guinness, maybe. Right, here are the comments. Um, we might save a few for tomorrow's video. I fully expect this video to be a bit all over the place as well. There's loads of things I want to say, to chat about, loads of comments I want to go into, um, not just from, from you guys and girls, but also from uh, important people. No, that's terrible. Sorry. Terrible. Um, Ange Postacoglu uh, and, and people like that. Um, Jota, etc. Anyway, we're starting with Aero250, a legend, an early follower of the channel. Thank you, mate. Hopefully everything is well. Saying Rangers' biggest threat going forward is a right back that can't defend, sums them up. Long as Andrew remains, we will dominate for the foreseeable. I think that is how I feel as well. While Ange is at the club, Rangers won't be able to lay a glove on us. Um, I think the matches will probably continue to to be like they have been recently. Listen, the, the four this year, uh, we've won three and, and drawn that one at Ibrox. All four of them have been really, really tight. Uh, we've kind of been up against it at periods of the match. I'd say we've been the better team, uh, certainly in, in the last three that we've won. But the most important thing is we've come out on top in all of them. And that is no coincidence. This Celtic team just knows what it, what it takes to kind of get over the line and win these matches now. And I really think the defence was the star of the, sh the stars of the show yesterday. You know, Hart, uh, Johnson, Carter Vickers, Starfelt, Taylor... A Ralston who comes on. I think all of them played a big part in the game. And when you look at the goal that they conceded, our goal, then it's just something you would never see from this Celtic team. Rob kind of touching on this a wee bit. Rob Oshlack with his comment. In the shadow of CCV, I think Starfelt has lifted his game big time in the last few matches and for individual improvement. 
late in the season. He has a standout. He looks super confident and is pushing forward when he can and the regular calamities have vanished. Now solid as a rock, which helps CCV do his thing. Rob, I think you are spot on. Starfelt was excellent yesterday. He just reads the game so well. I think he's more aggressive now than he was when he first came to the club. That stuff when he first came to the club was massively overblown, by the way. It just it just was. Um, but I do think that, you know, since those early days, he just he's far more aggressive in terms of coming on to the ball. There was a really good example yesterday. I think it would have been in the second half. Rangers were just kind of coming out and trying to launch a counter-attack, which is kind of all they had yesterday. And Starfield just kind of strode across and really went for it and took the ball. I can't remember who he took it from, but I think we ended up nearly scoring from the attack. And if you go back to the cup final against them at Hamden, it's Starfelt's interception, which actually sets up the second goal uh, for Kyogo that day. So Starfelt is having, you know, quietly a really, really good 2023. And I'm really hoping he starts to get that credit uh, as well. Him and CCV, that partnership is so underrated. The, the stats are going around. They've still not lost a domestic match when they've played together. And that's going to go into season three now because Carter Vickers isn't going to play again this season. Ange confirmed that. So, I mean, it's incredible. They're going to have gone through two seasons domestically. Carter Vickers and Starfield playing together, not losing a match. Um, and a big opportunity now for Kobayashi and a chance for Starfield to play on the right-hand side for a good run of whatever we've got left, five, six matches of the season. Uh, so yeah, thumbs up for Carol Starfield. Mantis Toboggan MD saying, second half was a carbon copy of last year's semi-final. We were either going to hang on for 1-0 or lose in extra time. Delighted we won today, but in my honest opinion, there's still big question marks over how we're going to get on in the Champions League. The uh, Champions League comment may have validity, but I don't feel like today is the day to for me to chat about that, you're more than welcome to. Um, for me, you know, it's it's all about domestic stuff right now. Um, I, when when you talk about, you know, the first point you made there about the games being similar, I think that's something Ange uh, would agree with. I'm talking about the game yesterday and the semi-final that we lost in extra time last year. Ange didn't say that exactly, but he did make some really good comments on uh, via play. They kind of welcomed them. Um, into the, not the studio, but the, the set up with the pundits. And by the way, Martin O'Neill was there as well. And I just thought the kind of embrace between Martin O'Neill and, and Ange Postacoglu was kind of a, a really special moment. I dare say they've spoken to each other prior to that, but it was cool actually seeing it. But anyway, Ange spoke about um, that semi-final last year and he, the word he used was resilience. And he felt Rangers had that resilience last year to, to kind of get over the line and, and win that game. And he says that he feels we have it now. And that's something, that resilience is something that we've kind of built um, in that year or whatever since that last semi-final. And I think he has uh, a really fair point in that regard. The tough periods that we managed to come through without giving away goals is a real credit to this team. And um, and that's not just the defence, it's the entire team as well. And we really kind of have to buckle up and deal with the opposition advancing, then we seem to do really well. And again, that's not coincidence. You look back at some of the games against Rangers, uh, certainly the, the games at Hamden, and, you know, they have had periods in the game, maybe not created loads of chances, but they have had wee periods, but we just seem to really stand strong. And you talk about this Celtic team under Ange, and most of the chat, as I said yesterday, is about the wingers and the inverted fullbacks and all of Kyogo's brilliance and all of that stuff. But for me... Just as big a part as the way the team defends. And again, a bit like Starfelt, hopefully yesterday was the day where that starts to kind of get more attention as well. Um, yeah, when I was chatting there a minute ago about Martin O'Neill, it's probably a good point to bring up chat about trebles. Uh, we've had seven in our history so far. Um, and when I'm talking about trebles, I'm talking domestic trebles. So League, League Cup and Scottish Cup um, and just keep a wee eye on the years here as we take a kind of relatively short journey through Celtic's history. So our first domestic treble came in our greatest ever season. It was 1966-67. Jockstein's Lisbon Lions actually won all five 
competitions that they entered that season. So they won the league, they won the League Cup, they won the Scottish Cup. They also won the Glasgow Cup and... Oh, the European Cup as well. Yeah, that was a pretty good season. Um, we then, two years after that, so 1968-69, won the treble again, reaching the European Cup quarterfinal that season. So we're on two so far. And we're into the 21st century before we win our third. It's under Martin O'Neill in season 2001. Henrik Larsson, 53 goals, all of that kind of stuff. And then things start to get totally crazy because we've won three in our entire history and now watch them start to roll in over the last seven seasons. So 2016, 2017, Invincible treble under Brendan Rodgers, Tom Rogic at Hamden, the special, special moment, the first treble I remember, the one that made me cry. We then win it in 2017-18, beat Motherwell in both Hamden finals. Again, Brendan Rodgers as the manager. 2018-19, it's Brendan Rodgers slash Neil Lennon who gets the job done. So we're up to six at this stage. It then becomes seven and four in a row in season 2019 20, won eventually in that Hearts final at Hamden in front of no fans at all. And we now stand in season 20, 22, 23 on the brink of another treble. We are three points away from winning the league title. And we have Inverness, Caledonian Thistle in the final of the Scottish Cup for a fifth treble in seven seasons. Let me repeat that, a fifth treble in seven seasons and it would be an eighth overall for Celtic which happens to be a world record. Rangers, old Rangers, new Rangers combined have won seven and uh, we can move on to eight this year if we win it. So it's incredible when, when you kind of go through all the years, all the people that have supported Celtic and maybe in their lifetime seen Celtic win two trebles and as I say for the third time we are on the brink, I think it's fair to say, of five trebles in seven seasons. These are incredible, incredible times to support the club that people will talk about for decades to come. Now, if you're not all completely bored with that history lesson, we'll switch back to current affairs. Just a set of quotes from Jota uh, speaking on via play post-match uh, about Cameron and Carter Vickers, who was stood alongside him. I just think these quotes are, are brilliant. He says, I think sometimes people only look at the guys who are on the score sheet or assists, but these guys have been tremendous and a special word to Cameron. People don't know how many sacrifices he does to be always playing with us and just be like the strong guy in the back. I'm proud of him to be in my team because he's definitely someone that I really liked to play with and he offers a lot. I thought Carter Vickers' kind of reaction next to Jota was interesting, told me a lot about his character. He kind of wasn't really smiling. He almost looked quite awkward when he was being complimented by Jota. Um, I know I think Joe Hart's referenced it in the past in a, an Instagram post about, uh, you know, it must be an amazing day if, if even CCV is smiling. So maybe that's just his thing, that he doesn't smile much. But um, I just got the impression that he um, he almost felt a wee bit awkward being praised. I think he, he probably quite likes just going under the radar, but he almost doesn't go under the radar. I think it's almost, you know, a, a myth to say that because every Celtic fan knows how incredible he is. Everyone, you know, inside the club, uh, you know, at Lennox Town knows how incredible he is. He is just immense. Um, and, yeah, it's a shame he's not going to be able to play in the cup final. I mean, people might just write that off a wee bit because it is lower league opposition. Um, but it would be a major chance for him to, to win the treble. What I do think, though, and I think someone might have commented this, um, if we do manage to beat Inverness in the final and, and you know, win the treble, CCB is going to get a hell of a reaction when he goes up to, to lift that trophy and all of that. Kieran Tierney style. Um, it's going to be... Pretty special. I just love the guy. I love a lot of people at the moment. Uh, George Barr, 
Next comment, I'm not declaring my love for George Barr. But anyway, he says, Hamish, I've watched the game twice. Celtic were like Real Madrid today, managing and probing and seeing out another pedestrian victory against a wounded, desperate team throwing the kitchen sink. I have actually not managed to, to watch the game back even once, uh, George, but I did get the feeling during the second half, even at the time, that the tactics were very deliberate from Celtic and it was a case of of just managing Rangers and still obviously having a threat going forward. I think at the time, especially when you're at the game, it's the age-old thing, like the juices are flowing, you're emotional and it's hard to kind of have a rational thought um, for me anyway. But I think when, when I go back and watch the game, especially the second half, uh, I'm kind of fully expecting to see uh, you know, Celtic still being relatively in control of that. There was maybe a wee period where I felt Celt uh, Rangers were, were getting, you know, at us a little bit too easily. But again, like all of these recent matches, you ask yourself, what did they really create? And it was that one Tavernier shot, hits the post, and Sakala hilariously puts it into the side net in deja vu style after the cup final. Other than that, uh, long distance efforts over the bar, which is not going to get it done against this Celtic team. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to maybe uh, sitting down later, probably with a non-alcoholic drink, like a coffee or something like that, and, and just watching the game back. It was a very special afternoon, though. Great stuff. A big shout out to Joe Ledley as well for putting up with me pre-match yesterday. He happened to be two rows behind me, completely coincidental stuff, but he was brand new and we'll catch up with him later this week. Uh, and find out what he really thought of me. A shout out to the legend Alan Sharp, or Sharpie, who I met yesterday at the game and uh, went to the game with. First time uh, I'd ever met him and just we, we all just really enjoyed our day, um, like probably everyone. And uh, it's just nice to, um, to meet new people who all have Celtic in common, basically. So uh, a day that I'll remember, I think, for a, a long time. Uh, I think Ange is amazing. It might not surprise you to hear that. I think Alistair Johnson and his crutches are amazing. I think Greg Taylor uh, is amazing, especially when he's picking up Rangers players by the collar. I think um, Callum McGregor is an amazing captain. Uh, I think the obsession Rangers fans seem to be having with the likes of uh, Cantwell and Raskin not having much time for Celtic is amazing. You guys just keep up the hating and uh, we'll keep up the winning, I guess. Um, I think Jota is amazing. I think Dyson Maida is amazing. I think winning is amazing. Um, yeah, I could say so much more. Uh, I guess it's amazing as well that we can actually win the league this Sunday at Tynecastle, um, and kind of weird that we haven't spoken about that at all today. I guess there's just so much happening. Uh, we will probably try and start turning attention to that from tomorrow's video. Um, who else I think is amazing? The number of people I met post-match or, or just throughout yesterday, it was one of those funny days when everyone was just in such a good mood, I wonder why, and just thanks everyone for the support um, for the channel, and thanks everyone I met for just being so nice, um, and yeah, I'll say goodbye, and I will see you tomorrow, um, but yeah, as we always kind of like to do after these major Hamden victories, uh, I'll leave you with some of the finest photos from another beautiful Sunday. <laughs> 